A photon checks into a hotel and is asked if they need any help with the luggage. No thanks, I'm traveling light. We're going to learn about the photoelectric effect. And I think photo means light and electric means electricity. So I think of like light and electrons. So when we have photoelectric effect, we have photons that are incident on a metal surface. So can you see here? I got my little photon shining onto a little piece of, let's say, zinc in this case. And depending on the frequency of light used, which we'll learn about in a second, there can be emitted electrons. So what do I mean by that? These little electrons can actually go flying out. So they can go wee and then go this way for example. So this here can be some electrons. Now, they're called photoelectrons right here. That's the name we give to electrons that are flying out because of this photoelectric effect. Now, this whole thing right here, these, these ones right here can fly over to this end right here and make a connection, and then, you know, that way you can detect them. Now, we have this whole thing here in a vacuum, and that's just so that the electrons don't run into any errant air molecules or things like that. So let's go a little bit deeper into this. So let's just focus on what we would expect a graph of this right here to look like. If we're graphing the frequency of the light, and remember, the energy of a photon is equal to HF. So that means the larger the frequency of the light, that means the larger the energy of the photons. And if they're kicking out uh, photoelectrons, well, then it would make sense if the larger frequency, uh, because the frequency is directly proportional to the energy, they should be able to give all that energy as kinetic to the electrons. In other words, if I'm kicking off the kinetic energy of the electrons, I would expect that this graph right here should look like this, you know, some sort of graph like this. And yet that's not what we see. What ends up happening instead is we have a certain threshold frequency. So we have this thing that we call F0, okay? So I'll maybe just define it like this right here. So we have this F0. This is a threshold frequency and below which no electrons are emitted. So in other words, this one right here, we put a little F0 like this right here. Anything below this, nothing happens. There's nothing. It doesn't even matter how bright you make the light. You can increase the intensity of the light, it won't matter. If it's below this F0, nothing happens. But once you are above this, then it does go linear and it does go like it should. So then it is proportional, so it's some sort of graph like this right here, for example. So that kind of works. Now this was really strange. Actually, scientists did not understand this right here. They weren't quite sure why this was. This is weird. And it turns out Einstein figured this out. Actually, he won the Nobel Prize in physics for this which is actually pretty crazy. He did some amazing things, but I was like, this, really? This is what they gave him the Nobel Prize for? Uh, I think it's because you could only get the Nobel Prize for something that explained an experiment, and this is something that was explained. In any case, let's go a little bit further. The way this was explained by Einstein was this right here. He was basically saying, hey, the electrons are actually trapped in this metal. So if you consider you have this metal surface, the electrons are actually trapped in it. They don't want to leave. And so you need to have a certain amount of energy in order to break that, you know, how much that the metal is holding them. So he quantified this, uh, he called this a uh, work function. So we can, uh, we write it with the Greek letter phi right here. And it's this right here. We say the work function is going to be the energy needed to eject electrons from the metal. That's how we define the work function. And it turns out different materials will have different work functions. It's pretty simple. So like, you know, zinc or, uh, pff, I don't know, iron, whatever, they'll all have different work functions. So you consider the work function is just, it's the amount of energy needed to kick out these electrons. So if you have enough energy, remember, E equals HF. Remember over here? So because we have E equals HF, if you don't have a high enough frequency, then you don't have enough energy, and that means you can't overcome the work function. That's actually how Einstein explained it. So just to reiterate here, we have if the energy of the incoming photons is less than phi, in other words, if the energy is less than this work function, what happens then? Remember, you have E equals HF. Uh, so that means if your uh, frequency is too low, that means your energy is too low, and you don't have enough energy to kick off these electrons. That means you're going to see no photoelectrons. Now, it turns out a wave can't do this. Only a particle can. So that means that uh, the photoelectric effect is actually evidence for the particle nature of light. So if you follow this here, you can say, aha, light cannot be a wave because a wave can't have a sufficient uh, you know, concentration of energy in order to do this. It turns out only a particle can. 